Have you ever sat around talking with your car buddy about a build and road trip that would be awesome, but because it's a terrible financial choice and you know it would be a disaster, you never actually do it? Well, this is one of those builds. Instead of just a normal build series, I wanted to give myself a real challenge. I wanted to buy a stock 37 year old VW, pick it up, drive it 500 miles, swap the engine in two and a half days, then drive it home 630 miles. With only four days to get the swap done and drive home, I knew we had a tough task ahead of us. On the last episode, we got our engine dropped in, ran into some rust related issues, and found out our new starter was bad. In this episode, we start out with wrong parts, find ourselves scouring the junkyard for parts, and deal with problem after problem after problem. And at one point, Charles said this. <laughs> We're at the point where the odds of us driving this car home tomorrow are 5% max. You're not so... good. Okay, so last night we dealt with a lot of starter issues. We did do a lot to diagnose it. It's generally my, my perspective that if something's happening on a new part, it's almost never the part. In this circumstance, we try and eliminate every possibility except for the starter. What we ended up with was a bad starter and we can't think of anything else that could be causing this. So uh, today we have a starter coming and right now we're working on exhaust stuff. We're pretending like the starter is definitely going to fix it and we're going forward with everything else because our timeline is super duper tight uh, and we have to get this thing running and rolling basically done today. Uh, what our plan is to take our flange, we're gonna take this and have it bolt up there. We're gonna cut all this shit off and weld this onto there once he gets it cut off. So we have a leak in the back of the car from the fuel filler neck to the tank, which is this hose here, so we gotta replace it. All right, so we're just gonna slit it all the way down. It's And then this should just roll off like that. Bam. Dude, That's this the leak. is what they were driving down here in. Holy oh cow. Oh my gosh. Look at the inside. Look right here. They <laughs> drove down here in this. Well, I'm glad that we're getting it changed. God. See the rust is popping off. It's kind of thin. This is gonna be tricky because I feel like this is ultra fragile and you could see how hard I was pushing on that one. So do you want to see what you guys are riding on on the way down here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my that God. That is like uh, how you made it here yeah. is a miracle. You could you see a see hole right, right through, through that oh thing. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> good thing that's a low pressure side. <laughs> <laughs> so good oh, news is we didn't die on the way down here and the car didn't catch on fire. So I think I think we're probably okay where we're at. We got enough penetration now. We haven't bottomed out, but you can't always bottom out. You gotta, you gotta do what you can, you yeah. know? You work away you got. Here is our fuel line we just cut off. Jamie cut off and so doused himself in additional gas. So the issue that we're running into is every time we move it back, we spring more leaks in this because you can see this hose looks like absolute dog So. Uh, the reason why it looks bad is if you look up here, they mount into the body here because all the moisture gets kind of trapped in between here. We keep getting leaks right around the clamp areas, which is right around the middle here. We have now cut this entire section out. We're running the one line all the way back. We're going to now power the fuel pump to see if it leaks. Uh, fingers crossed. I, what I'll do is um, I'll stuck, stick this through my eye if this thing doesn't start with that starter. <laughs> This is the moment of truth right now. Jamie's about to jump to this with the power probe to see if this fuel line that we've just temporarily set up is going to leak. What is the ramification if this leaks? If this leaks, we're well, going to the beach. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we can't go to the beach. Oh. If this leaks, we are going to end up having to, to then cut that other one all the way back, which is actually okay. The other one was the more scary one that we thought was gonna actually give us a potential real big problem that might leave us stranded. Okay. It is running. I don't see any fuel. Geysers. We still have to mount it back up and then test it again. The initial test checks good. I'm trying to get these axles bolted in. So I'm not gonna like finalize them because we still have to do our coilovers up front, but just trying to get them in place and I will be tightening down the inner joint. If you don't tighten it, it gets sad and comes apart and generally punches a hole through the transmission, so. Uh, I'm cleaning myself up because I have uh, gasoline in my armpits. Did you and get this armpit? No, it's this one. It's this, this armpit, armpit. yeah. Um, yeah, but now we have a moment of truth. We're gonna power probe it up because we have our lines finished and we'll know if this is gonna be done or not done. We've since secured all of them, which we might've broken it and made it worse. 
He got 999,000 problems and all of them are the Shiraco. This Shiraco <laughs> are all of them. <laughs> Running. I think that's good. Yeah, I think we're good. Okay. All right. I'll call send, it a win and move it. on. Send and we'll, we'll deal with it later. If, deal. If that deal. Leaks deal. Again. Nice work. One of the things about the lines that I think is possible, you know, yeah. the, the filler neck issue, the fuel line issue, because of how much they leaked and all that stuff. I think it's possible that driving this a super long distance, because the car hadn't been driven probably over 40 miles an hour for more than like five or 10 minutes for, <laughs> for a decade, a very long time. And so all yeah. that vibration and movement on the yeah. road and all that stuff causes the body to flex and things like that. And that might've been all of these problems uh, could have been a result of just that one thing alone. And then we're in there poking around with it, mm -hmm. definitely doesn't help. But it just means I'm even more surprised we actually yes. made it there. I'm also uh, potentially gonna say the option two is 100% of it's Jamie's fault. Oh, yeah. Let's just cut that first part out and go with the Jamie's fault one. Jamie, okay, it's Jamie's fault. Sorry, Jamie. Now that we've passed our fuel system problem, we can cut back to stressing as to if the starter's gonna fix it. So we'll know pretty soon, and then we'll decide whether we're pushing this on a trailer or not. Stay tuned. We ground on this one and Neil here is going to weld this in some fashion. <laughs> Not really the best way or most perfect way to do this, but get this actually working so that we can connect to this crappy old exhaust. Oh, there we go. <sighs> I think that's all we got. Ow. Missed. All right. <laughs> hey, what if you tapped it here? Oh, there you go. Now it's back. Hey. This is starter number two. Uh, this is a less reputable starter than our last starter, but our last starter <laughs> was it? bad, so. Okay, hold on, because it wasn't lining up. I mean, it's clocked all stupid. Uh, it seems like it might be the wrong starter. Oh my God. All right, wrong starter. Are you kidding me? Okay, hold on. <sighs> okay. Well. Out of all the scenarios, that's probably the worst one, because now we still don't know. Is their catalog wrong? Or are we trying to get the wrong start? That's, that's my concern. Well, totally different size. The clocking is totally different. So yeah, uh, it probably goes without saying that this one did not fit in any capacity. So the only thing that makes sense to do is to keep working as if we're gonna have a starter magically appear out of thin air. Out of all the low moments up until this point, this might be the lowest, uh, lowest moment, so yeah. I felt pretty hopeless at this point when that happened because it was very difficult for us to get a starter in the first place. There was no way if we got another one to, for us to guarantee we were gonna get the right starter. We're kind of mix and matching cars. We had a different transmission than what came, would normally come on that engine. The Scirocco doesn't even have that engine. We looked parts catalogs, we looked junkyards, we felt like we exhausted all of our resources. And it's not like a Mark IV VR6 car is the most popular car on the planet mm -hmm. oh, anyway. So not, not looking good at this point. There's a local starter place that Jamie ran to to have that starter bench tested and maybe fixed, maybe not. If that doesn't come through, uh, we found one about an hour and 20 minutes away. They're gonna go pick that up and come back. That last one that didn't fit really threw, threw a wrench in our plan. We're just kind of trying to get as many little details and, and big details uh, <laughs> taken care of as we can so our engine even though it's installed and mounted, it's not tightened down and snug down. Kind of same thing with the suspension. So Paul and I are going through getting everything tightened down, torqued down. We found a store in Tampa that has the starter. I had the lady there text me a picture of it just to verify. And yes, it is the correct one. They're holding it for us. So it's five o'clock and they're supposed to be driving it back first thing tomorrow morning. So it is. this is why I am on my way to Tampa. Otherwise, we're waiting until midday tomorrow to possibly get the correct starter. Or and then it'll either be a starter through the window of this car or a celebration because the car starts or something else that I don't want to talk about. 
Hey, on a plus yeah. note, no tools have been thrown up until this point. There are no tools so, thrown. That's kind of a victory. There yeah. haven't. There wasn't any yelling really of all. Is mostly just like <laughs> sadness, disappointment, <laughs> and internal rage. Is is really is like if you, there's seething looks that happen, but that's the the most that we've gotten so far. I feel like that's pretty good on our part. <laughs> Somehow, it's the best you're gonna get. I need to make sure the car doesn't fall off the lift, so because this is Sketch City 9000 if we don't pay attention. See it lower and down while we jack it? That's because we're slamming this beast. All right, that actually was not as sketchy as I, I thought. Great news, everyone. Something went well. I did put the front wheels on that we got. Oh, uh, we got a smoking deal on them and it's gonna transform the reps. I know people are gonna be super super butthurt that we're not getting like real baller wheels, but I'm not a baller. I'm not even a shot caller. So a big shout out to Carlos for actually dropping yeah. those wheels off for us. It was a huge lifesaver given the <laughs> show that we had going on. <laughs> we didn't have time to go anywhere and we needed wheels and tires yeah. desperately. Man. So yeah. Carlos came through in a pinch, delivered, hung out for a few minutes. Dude, you, you yeah. saved the day Thank you so uh, much. on the wheels and tires, man. Much appreciated. Also in the saga of, hey, our parts are wrong, we ordered hub centering rings and they don't fit either. So <laughs> with our wheels uh, on the car, we have the suspension bolted up. We have to tighten the top of our shocks and then our axle bolts. So we're going down. This is gonna be the first time it's gonna be supported under its own weight since- Yeah, three days ago. Since three days ago. It still doesn't run, but <laughs> at least it can look like something happened. Hey, at least we'll be able to push it on the trailer, but we gotta take so, it off. So, we're gonna see how dirt nasty low she is. And crooked. And crooked, because we didn't mess with coil over that much. And we can't even get it off the lift. Actually, dude, I like where that sits. Me too. I think that needs to be our target. I'm super into this, for, this fitment. Uh, uh, the, rears could, the rears need some spacers maybe, but. If you take a look at our situation with our oil pan, it's pretty oh, low. That's not bad at all, it's, dude. It's pretty oh, low. Oh, that'll be fun. I mean, it's got like it's a, got one fist. Yeah. One small to medium sized fist. No, you got plenty. That's, that's like four inches. It just ram home our trip just perfectly. Yeah. Just blast the oil pan on the ride home. No, I think it's good. I like how it sits. I mean, oh. obviously, it, we have to take our measurements and get our coilovers even. Uh, left to right and then make sure our front to back measurement is close but I think this is good that also implies that this is definitely gonna run and we don't know if that's true right now what he's saying is that the frame will clear the rails of the trailer when we push it on so. yeah, that's exactly what I'm saying <laughs> it's always crazy to me when I look at uh, older cars when you lower them even like not this car isn't super slammed you can see what the, what the wheel gap is here they are so low you lower a mark 7 it you know it lowers it down it gives it a better stance whatever but when you lower one of these you feel like you could just trip over the bumper uh, walking past the car you may recall back when I was moderately excited about this tube uh, breaking off as I was trying to cut it because of super hard access behind the uh, brake booster. Well, what I didn't realize is this actually needs to kind of stay in place because it acts as a support. Otherwise, when you push your foot on the clutch, the clutch cable assembly pulls all the way up against the firewall and it actually tweaks the firewall a little bit. And we were worried that like on the trip home, we'd pull the clutch cable right through the firewall. So Jamie custom fabbed up this little bracket here. So now we can run the clutch cable through it and this spreads out the load against the firewall a little bit better. I gotta say he did a great job on this I think he did um, an immaculate super, job. Super, super fantastic. Threw some paint on it and now it'll fit right back up in this little location that you can't see way back here and give quite a bit more support. You can see here, this is the pedal bracket mounted and it is touching our carpet. So uh, we need to trim this carpet to allow all that to have free movement. It gets bound up by travel by all the carpet underneath. You can see it moving behind it. I'm gonna plan to try to cut right around here and then behind to try to trim as little as possible because obviously this carpet is in such good condition. This is a bad idea laying down. Why? Because it makes me very tired. Once you've had like three 18 hour days where you got no sleep and then you continue. And add on top of the stress of like, all these things are going wrong. The worst thing you can do is lay down to work under a dashboard because you're just 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> you just want to fall asleep. Yeah. It's like a shark. You just can't stop yeah. going. Yeah, well, that's not going to change, but all the yuck down at the bottom that you could see before is gone, so it's better. We got a starter! Woo! Hey, starter! It's been triple tested. This better work. <laughs> Here's two hours of driving. No problem. Thank you. Dude, dude, thank you so much. Guess what, Charles? What, Paul? Still not enough pedal travel. How much more do you need to take out? I don't know. This is the face of me not knowing and I'm <laughs> defeated. That is a face. Here's what I think. I think it's probably enough pedal travel to get us to do, do what we need to do. It is not full pedal travel. So we just have to go on like VACOM and see how much throttle position. Yes. That's actually a great idea. That is Nathan. You, you are becoming <laughs> you becoming an almost technician with that kind of talk. That is exactly what we'll do to determine how much not pedal travel we have. <laughs> okay, we have a Startron. All right, uh, you know what I am gonna do is I'm gonna plug this guy in. Uh, we added a new ground, so we have a proper engine ground, which means we have a proper starter ground. Hi. I can't wait. Negative. Paul, how you feeling? Nervous. Jamie, how you I feeling? I have to admit, a little nervous, but I'm feeling pretty good. Moment of truth. Yes! yes. That was a good one. Yes. That that's was, exhausting. Uh, that was a very good sign. Okay. Well, at Cranks, we <laughs> at least know that starter was the problem. What a P oh. and the D. Jesus, thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Uh, the little six pound, eight ounce baby Jesus. <laughs> he was a man, he had a beard. I like to picture my Jesus with a tuxedo t-shirt. Because yeah. it says like, I want to be formal, but I'm here to party too. Jamie is Jesus uh, in this particular instance because he drove uh, and his father to uh, about an hour plus away oh, yeah. uh, uh, to get this stupid ass starter. I also didn't want to say anything to you guys, but I will now, now we know this works. But when he took the starter to the guy who like rebuild starters, he put it on the bench and he fired it up and he was like, I don't know, it doesn't sound bad to me. And I'm like, that's, I was hoping he'd be like, yeah, this thing's totally screwed. And he was like, I don't know. He's like, it could you're be like, something else. You're like, the whole way you're driving there, you're super nervous. Like, I am this like is playing everything in my head. I'm like, it's it. gotta be the starter, it's gotta be the starter, it's gotta be the starter. <laughs> but like, now I'm like, when you ask me, you're like, how you feeling? I'm like, Really? Nervous. Really? I have more information than <laughs> Probably you Probably more nervous than I was letting on. <laughs> so, but now I feel totally relieved. We might have actually just thrown in a towel, yeah. honestly. Like, if we brought it to a starter expert, and that guy was like, it's nope, fine, seems good, uh, we would have been like, F this, we're going home. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, okay. bad starter out of the box. Very rare that new parts are bad. Yep. In this particular case, it was indeed bad. Okay. Now we well, are step? on full scramble mode to actually get this car. I would love to see this car on the alignment rack before we go home tonight. That would be nice. I think that's feasible. I think it's reasonable. Here's a plug that we're making for the cool wing system. We have a bunch of these vacuum plugs, which this one actually fits perfectly on there. Number one, two things. It doesn't bite very far onto the, the nipple at the front of the block that we have to terminate. But more importantly, because this is for vacuum, uh, this is probably not likely to hold up long term, so we're doing this as a temporary solution so we don't have this explode coolant everywhere on our ride home because it's for vacuum and not coolant. On a car like the Mark IV came out of that has an after run coolant pump and a bunch of other actually additional radiator, they have a secondary radiator on uh, Mark IV uh, VR6 engines. So this engine doesn't have any of that. So we gotta get rid of it. What you will see through some of this video is these marks, these purple marks on a lot of the hardware. This is because we mark them when we're tightening stuff to make sure that we know it's tight. This is really especially important because we have multiple people involved in this big project that we're taking apart a ton of stuff. That way we know it's tight and we know we can move on. And if it doesn't have a purple mark, it needs to be tightened. So but this is also important for if you have a long-term project, that way when you come back to it a week later, two weeks later, you know that it's tight. Got a couple new battery cables because the ones in the car were just trashed. We also didn't actually have an alternator cable, so of course we need that for charging voltage. 
So I'm trying to make some sense of this spaghetti spaghetti warehouse of wiring, and then I'm gonna run a cable down to the alternator, get these placed so that we can properly, properly run the car. And this trim has some challenges getting in here because this shift is shifter is too high. This is a little bit high anyway because when we put a ball on this, oh, <laughs> He's, Charles is out there in the engine bay f***ing with me. Yeah, I'm about to cut the shifter off. All right, here we go. We're cutting this down uh, mo mostly so I don't punch this uh, radio knob right off. Bam! Uh, because I'm, a, I'm extremely powerful when I shift. I have a lot of power in my shift. So I'll end up probably punching this if you want to hit first gear. So uh, here we go. Cut it off. Uh, this box is to protect everything inside the car. It's a firewall. This is approved fire retardant material. <laughs> There we go, and we can put our shifter on. <laughs> Charles is so f***ing with me from inside the engine bay. <laughs> That's Charles in the engine bay, messing around. <laughs> we, better, we better sell this car and move out. There's a ghost in here. We have all the coolant lines hooked up, we believe. We did forget one and sprung a leak. We're ready to go, and this is gonna be first startup. Moment of truth. Oh, I got juice. We got juice. Check out that clear fuel filter, guys. Uh, stage five. Check it out. Stage five. Ready? One, a two, three. We have some drippage. Uh, we do have some drippage. I think it might be from your my yeah, my better. plug. Drippage. Yeah. A little bit. All right. So, I'm gonna come up so we can actually fix it. Camshaft timing adjuster bank one open circuit and mass airflow sensor. Which oh, that's why. I'll take that. All right, that's clear. <laughs> We're gonna I mean, that was the only relevant code. I know? solved it. There's a vacuum leak somewhere. Where is that coming from? It's not like it's up here. Shut it off. It's the valve cover. Oh, probably it's not vented. You're probably 100% right, because it was yep. sucking the hell out no, of no, it. No, pull that cap. Yeah, it's no cap. Around. Okay, let's try. Yeah, that solved that. Here's the update. Car starts, car runs, couple of problems. One, we have a coolant leak from the flange that has a coolant passage as well as the combi valve on it. We didn't have a new gasket, so we made the call to reuse the gas, the old gasket, and clearly that bit us in the butt. Minor, minor hiccup, solvable problem. Uh, the bigger concern I think right now is a almost dead misfire on cylinder six and a sporadic misfire on cylinder five. So that may just be some sympathy misfires from cylinder six, the ones counting on five. So we swapped some plugs around, we swapped some coils around, and we are going to uh, put the, I guess, the air intake back on and try again. Yeah. Fuel injector seems see? likely because we didn't get new fuel injectors, did we? We did, I thought. No, I we thought didn't. we just replaced the gaskets on the yeah, fuel we injectors. Yeah, we just cleaned up the gaskets. What happened was... What happened was... What happened was when we found out there was a misfire and then the coil and plug didn't fix it, Charles and I are afraid we f***ed up building the engine. That's what happened. That's really so no matter how experienced you are, there's always a piece of you that assumes that you f something up. Yeah. At this moment, right here. <laughs> right now. I'm feeling like there's not anything else that could be. Couldn't, there's no, there's no other be. reasonable solution it could be. Right, other than we did something wrong. That is 100% just, just pure and adulterated anxiety just washed over us. Charles did what's called an output diagnostic test mode. Basically the scan tool actuates individual components on the engine. When he did that, we did not hear an audible click coming from the cylinder six injector. Three, six, ready? I heard, I heard three, it was audible. I also, he put a screwdriver on it that I was holding and I did not feel it either. I did hear audibly the other one. So um, we suspect Either we have a wiring issue to the injector or an injector issue. To the injector. I'd like to inject the hole into my head. Keep, keep going. I 
that's at what 145. Mm. That's fine. That's, that's fine. enough to not dead miss. The only thing that makes sense to do is pull the manifold. I really don't want to. It's going to be a nightmare on this engine set in this engine compartment because all the bolts are down here. Uh, I have no idea how I'm going to access these. So yeah, I don't know. It's uh, going to be a fun time. I am. There's important stuff going on over I there. I know, but I can't do hey, it. Hey, look, <laughs> we're at the point where the odds of us driving this car home tomorrow are 5% max. You're not so, good. It, I mean, it, it doesn't matter <laughs> is what I'm getting at. <laughs> it, it, it doesn't look good right now. We may be able to make it happen, but it's not looking good. Unfortunately, I can't help him with anything, which is why I'm wiping the dashboard down. <laughs> now, here we are. Why there is an FN on here, I don't know, but this is how I feel right now. Forfeit? Yeah. Uh, that's a word that starts with F. We'll go with that. Is it fantastic? Fantastic. Injectors uh, are nowhere to be had. Um, they're exceedingly rare. Only a handful of dealers in the country can even have one in stock, about five total. Um, we can't get one locally. So we actually, in the, the search for a starter, which completely got for us, we actually saw one in a junkyard. So tomorrow, there's a very local junkyard that we can go to to get that. We are going to attempt to get this manifold off and the rail, uh, the rail out so we can get the injector out and then attempt to pop it out so we can replace the one single injector, which we believe we can access. Charles and Jamie are both working on that. I'm gonna work on this harness stuff uh, because, so we, maybe we can actually get something done and leave here. We might be able to clean this injector and it might be amazing, but odds are it's dead electronically. Therefore, um, that will do us no bueno-ness or buenoosity. Probably not gonna do anything. Oh yeah. No, 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 no question. Yeah. Okay, so we confirmed that we do in fact have a bad injector for cylinder six. I don't know why we didn't see this before. We should have known it was bad. Oh, it says, I mean. It says it's bad right on the injector. <laughs> I don't know how Paul and I missed that when we built Jeez. the engine. So we are many days into being in Florida at this point, And the only thing that we have done is go to the hotel. Yep and go to Jamie's shop. <laughs> no beach trips, no swimming, no golf. Nothing. Nothing. And it was winter in North Carolina where we live, so it was pretty cold here, and it was very nice there. Jamie wears shorts year round because he's a Florida man. <laughs> <laughs> Well, well indeed. Welly, welly, welly. Day is this 7, three? three or four, I guess technically three and a half. Day yeah. three and a half. Things didn't go well last night. Uh, I guess we started it and it ran, but we had a bad injector. So Charles is gonna be going to the junkyard. Yep. Because it's the only place you can find an injector and there it's happens to be a 24 valve engine at the car. yard. Yeah, we found that when we were trying to solve our starter solution. <laughs> so, but legit, this is the only solution yes. we have. This is it. If this doesn't go we're well, we are towing this home. We're done. I mean, like, there's no other alternative for this. And if you if you can see my face, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, the uh, the burning some, in my eyes. I need some cucumbers to just. Uh, yeah. Shows that I'm done. So uh, I'm done. He's yeah. done. This is what four like 20 hour days look like. Yeah. In a uh, row. I'm gonna be staying here, finishing up some wiring stuff, tucking it. It's not gonna be perfect when we're done because I need to get it so that this thing is basically ready to go when Charles gets back because we need to get the f out of here. The goal is goal. Noon. Two to three o'clock would be probably, I think that is <laughs> realistic. I think I'm out of, I think out of my, I'm out of my mind. You think noon? I think I'm out of my mind with noon. I think, I think noon, three o'clock is probably. I think you're high as a kite. I think, noon's just, I think three is ambitious, <laughs> yes. but more realistic. Just for the record, it's right now, it's 825. 825, so. Pretty much, Paul, we'll be back at 10 o'clock. And when we come back, this car better look amazing. I think when we, by the time we get back, you're you're gonna be, it's gonna look a whole lot different. I'm gonna try to get the hood on too. Okay, okay break. All right, let's go. What's going on?
All right, so at the junkyard, uh, trying to round up where the heck this VR6 Jetta is. It is not this one. That's a 2.0. Uh, and I don't remember what color it was. It's a blue Jetta, it's a, blue a Mark IV. Look what I found. I can bring Paula tape back. Oh, hell for, yeah. For the, uh, for the car. I found our Jetta. The engine is there. The manifold is on. Let's get some injectors. Here we go. Oh my goodness. It's all there. Yeah, this manifold looks better than ours. This manifold does look better than ours. Oh, uh, this is exciting. We have an intake on it as well. Yeah. So I... we're gonna grab that. Yeah, just grab anything that we might need. Anything that we might need. Very happy I am right now. Uh, obviously, this is not the most ideal situation. We also need these little rubber grommets for that uh, vacuum reservoir that I took off. So I think we should leave Paul in suspense on whether we found it or not and not tell him anything. What do you think? Uh, That's good. And just like, give, make, see if he has no hope. <laughs> we can try. Like walk in the building and, and uh, act like we didn't have it. Yeah, dude. Let's do it yeah. because he's going to be super down and then he's going <laughs> to be happy. And why would we want to do anything to change that? Nice. He did one better and played a prank on him and told him that we found it but there's no engine. Oh, probably. like like it's more realistic of a prank? Yeah, like like what would have probably, <laughs> what should have actually happened. So obviously we need the injector um, and we're gonna have to transfer over our injector seals, which is not a huge deal. I'm gonna also take the injector retainer clips. Ours were a little wonky, but you know, we may not need them, but look, we cannot afford to come back. We don't have the time. So any possible thing that we're gonna need, I'm gonna get. And if we don't end up using it, we'll have extra for next time. But uh, this is this is the way. The connector's broken, but I don't care about that. I don't know if that's, I think that was just water. All right, so we we have one for sure. <laughs> I mean, look, a dirt, an injector that's a little dirty is gonna be better than one that's dead. Here's our second one. You see the seal is all, all sad. There's three, okay. Not three, see what happened. This outer ring is breaking. So right. that one's no good. You just break another one? Yep. One they've been sitting for how who knows how long. These are the the shorter distance ones. So I don't know if they're more carboned up because look, you can see like this runner looks clean. This runner is super, super carbony. Clean, carbon, clean, carbon. The ones that are carboned up are the ones that aren't coming out very well. The there we go. Okay, we got three. Gosh. I hear stance make some dance. We hit the damn jackpot on this one. Okay, so this may be the worst timing and the worst idea, but I don't care anymore. We're gonna play a little prank on Paul. We're gonna tell him that we weren't able to find the injector. So while Nate and I walk in, we're gonna be talking about some trailer options and I'm gonna show <laughs> him these gasket things that we had to end up getting. So at least we could get the gasket uh, how, the gasket sealed up. Wait, hold on. How long are we gonna play this out? Like, I, I don't think I'm gonna be able to play it on very long because that is messed up and I'm, <laughs> I'm over it and I just wanna get this damn car finished, but I need this in my life. I just need some joy in my life. So uh, yeah, this may be a bad idea. Give it, I don't care. Where do you want to start? You got no injector? I got these things to fix the gasket. We got a gasket coming. Oh, well, I guess I didn't need to buy but these. It's, it's not going to be real, too. So I was like. So I'd been thinking about buying a car trailer anyway. Watch yourself and don't fall out. Okay. Um, so I'm sure there's probably some affordable ones down here. Or we're out of options. There's no injector. No, I got three in my bag. <laughs> 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 I think Jamie's heart fell out of his butthole. Uh, oh my God, I feel so bad. Now, to be fair, they may not work, and we may still have <laughs> But I just needed a little bit of joy in my life right now. So, I wasn't mad at all. I I just remember the sinking feeling I had that washed over me. It felt completely defeated. That was all. And to, like, let's face it, if that's really what had happened, there would be no surprise that that's what happened. It wouldn't. We we probably had some options to pursue, but not really. Not very good ones. Beg people on the internet to hopefully maybe be able to come through <laughs> if they have an old engine laying in their f***ing <laughs> garage. That's, that's pretty much what our only other option would have been. I'm like, <laughs> oh, I'm, like I'm just going to keep quiet. I am just feel so horrible. <laughs> and I found an intake boot. I don't know if it's going to fit, but I got it. The, the injectors we got? Yes. Like, look really bad. They look like He broke like three of them trying to get them out. Well, good news. No, I know. 
We got a few to pick from. That's that's why we only got three. <laughs> it's because you broke the broken. other three. Oh, you want to see what I've been working with? Okay, what I did here, this is kind of important. So this stuff, te we're temporarily just dumping the ECM in here. This is not really the way, the way it's gonna be. It is where it's going, but it's gonna be in a much, uh, we're probably gonna have to make a bracket for it, whatever, to lift it up off of here. This cowl is not gonna be exposed to the elements, but it will get water in it, so you have to lift this stuff off of here. So that's gonna be something we do later on. Everything else, I ran through here and then down we have some cables we had to run to the battery over here that kind of ran underneath the booster over here. And then some that ran right here along this, uh, the trans here. We have to make sure we tighten them up to get away from the shifter right here. The other stuff I ran, these are our starting stuff, our starting cables, OBD2 port and throttle pedal. That runs over here behind and then down through the firewall. So we'll show you the inside there. So this is the cables we ran through here. This is the starter stuff, this is the pedal, and then the OBD2 port, which I had to depin, depin to get through that, that hole. So I gotta repin that, which is pretty sweet. Um, but I'm gonna tuck all this wire stuff up, I'm gonna put all these trim pieces in and reinstall. You can see here, we had to trim our carpet. That is what we had to do to get the full travel. So if you take a look where that pedal goes to get full travel, you actually need to trim that carpet, otherwise you're not gonna get it. The reality is that these are the only options we have. I know someone's gonna be super mad at us for that, but uh, guys, I had to do it. I had no other choice. We gotta, <laughs> we gotta be able to drive this car. This Eurowise bracket is probably designed for a car with no carpet in it, would be my only assumption, or the Scirocco is different in some way. That's one thing. A lot of the stuff that they're gonna do on these cars is gonna be, you know, m rabbits, Mark One rabbits, uh, maybe Jettas, but Scirocco's are not the most common swap, uh, which is why this was a especially stupid choice. We gotta get this connector through here. This is for the oxygen sensor so we can get it wired to the ECU, but there isn't a place to do it, so hole drilling. Do you want part of your car back or like? <laughs> I'm still super uneasy because we have put zero feet on this car so we have all still all the same unknowns that we would have no matter what all while diagnosing things that frankly none of this really should have been a problem up to this point we have unknown transmission we have unknown drivetrain we have we don't know how the exhaust is going to hold up we have unknown electrical stuff I, I trust in our wiring for the engine but how is that mating to the car on that so it feels a smidge like we might be out of the uh the boiling pot but uh we may not be. I'm still very uneasy about our situation. It's not like we're gonna have a couple of days to shake the car down and make sure we don't have any issues. We're gonna find out real soon. Yeah. Okay, so we have a coolant leak. Uh, it's from our radiator that is ancient, uh, and so we are completely f So good news is that Charles already has the manifold loose still because he hasn't reinstalled it even though he partially reinstalled it even well, though the hard part's done the hard he's, part's done he's laughing because so he has to do it again he has to undo that so that he's we can get the radiator out because this radiator is not something that we are going to be able to to get out as you can see with the manifold on small leak under pressure and hot very quickly can turn into a large leak which very quickly can turn into uh you're stuck on the side of the road on a bridge in the middle lane in traffic. But everyone at home is thinking, you drove this radiator here. Yeah, and then we screwed around with it for three days. And uh, it, it, even though like, yes, we did drive down here on it and it seems like it shouldn't be a problem, but we're probably dealing with either a 37 year old radiator or an old radiator of unknown age. We've also been moving it around and shaking it around and it just gets sad sometimes. When can we get it? All right now? All right, let's do that. All right, who has one? 1-800-RADIATOR has a radiator. <laughs> where, are, where are they located around the corner? 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes away. I can, I can run so you guys can keep working. Well, yeah, why don't we do that? All right. Okay, so we're just getting the hood installed. You can see Jamie and Charles are getting that tightened down. They're using the witness marks to try to determine where the correct adjustment is going to be. We are making sure that the oil cap is gonna clear, which is gonna be a, a really crucial component. So 
we're gonna lower this thing down slow so you can check out exactly what's gonna happen in terms of clearance for that. Luckily, we have the intake manifold off, so we can actually put it on top of the valve cover and see if it will clear the oil cap, which is the highest point. The live view is really, really good. And there's a pretty big delay on the GoPro, so we'll go nice and slow. Yeah. All right. Going slow. Oh, I think that's good. Oh, I think it actually We right. are not completely closed. So raise it back up. Good shot. Oh, we got it. Oh. Go ahead and shut the hood. Shut all the way. Oh, look Perfect. at that. Now, let's take a look at if, our hood alignment. If the intake manifold was on, yeah. there's no way we would have gotten a shot. Nope. That's that a is cool shot. such a good shot. While Nathan was gone and we're in this frantic panic to try to get this car done so we can get the heck out of here, uh, we actually got the wiring stuff taken care of. So I cleaned everything up, all the original wiring for the car because we're not like 100% positive. We haven't figured out everything to make it perfect so we didn't want to just chop it off. We tucked a bunch underneath that, that we're not using and I cleaned up the rest of the cowl part, made sure we were clear from the wiper here and then put this cowl trim back on which uh, these are, I was extremely delicate when cleaning this because these things are super fragile and they break a lot. The wheel wouldn't turn because it was hitting the back of the new coilover, but that was not a problem with the car. That was just a problem with me not putting the proper camber adjustment in. So now that that's fixed, we're just, you know, rolling with the punches here. I made a mess. I sprayed out all the junk 40 years of crap from underneath the dash. You picked the harder seat to video me installing. Well, because the angle's the worst. It's worse. But it's all right. I'm in now. Well, I'm not in, but I'm in the car. Because our new radiator fits kind of different, this hose no longer reaches uh, <laughs> where it needs to go. So we're taking another run to the parts store. How many parts store runs is that? I think that's five. Um, maybe six. These are little trees, and we're gonna go with America. Amer what does America smell like? America smells like vanilla Roma. Vanilla Roma, that's what America smells like. So here we go. But I got you this while we were out. Oh, sh <laughs> we're listening to a tape on the way home. What does it say on it? It said, oh, I don't know. Is this, this? <laughs> I guess we'll just, it's a mystery. We're gonna have to put it it's in. It's a mystery. Room. I don't know, there's a bunch of words on there. You can tell me. Dude, if you... this is no chance this is gonna play. It, it looks like hell. I don't think it's gonna play either. Uh, we had the coolant hose issue. Paul's gonna run to the parts store. He's there now. Uh, I got the manifold back on and snugged. The fuel injectors are all on, vacuum lines and everything. Jamie put the throttle body on. Got our stage five race car intake on. I don't know that I have the ability to deal with any more problems. We also don't have the serpentine belt or the tensioner on, so we're not driving the water pump, and we don't have to worry about just exploding coolant out of that lower, radi uh, lower coolant hose. Firing. Better. Better. Okay, so we started it up it obviously ran, it ran a bit better than it did before. It still feels like there's some kind of residual misfire going on. We're gonna blow the faults out in case um, the ECM had cut power to that injector for some reason. I don't think that happened, but I just wanna make 100% sure. We cleared all those faults out. Now we actually only counted two misfires on cylinder five, which is totally normal, especially for an engine that has no miles on it. So we're gonna cut it down. We're gonna wait for Paul to get back with our coolant hose. We're also probably open the back door because that really stinks. Um, and uh, hopefully that's good. We still have zero miles on the car, so my confidence isn't insanely high just, just yet, just yet. Okay, so the last thing we need to do is double check to make sure the throttle body has clearance against the hood here, because it's pretty high. This was high, this is the other high thing. So uh, we're gonna make sure it clears, and so we're gonna drop this hood. We're gonna give you a shot now. I think that's good. Oh, I think that's How are we, does our temperature gauge work in this car? No, our temperature gauge doesn't work. We are gonna be using a scan tool, an OB-11 specifically uh, hooked up, and that's why I added that phone mount on the dash so that I can monitor the RPM and the coolant temp on the way home. We ordered it and had it shipped specifically to Elite Motor Works in Sarasota, Florida for all your European automotive needs. So right now we're gonna burp the cooling system and make sure the fans actually run them because that is an important 
tape to make sure we don't overheat on our way home. We also are gonna put a multimeter on the battery to make sure we got charging from the new alternator. What's happening? Uh, we, our combination valve on the back of the head is leaking, uh, or where, where the coolant and the combination valve meet. This is the last time. I know that I've said a lot of times this is the last time that we've had multiple hurdles to overcome again and again and again and again and again, but this one we think is the last one. <laughs> Charles is uh, making a gasket because we have a leak that we cannot resolve. Isn't, didn't we make a gasket for it last time? No, no, we used some copper spray, which we knew was some bullshit that we were just like, we we're like, hey, this is a bullshit way to fix it, but this is what we got, so this is what we're gonna go, go with. And it didn't work, and it confirmed our feelings that it was bullshit. So, uh, new gasket's in, we're pressure testing before we bump too much coolant and do the same thing we've done the last two times we've had coolant leaks and just piss coolant everywhere and then drain out all the cool new cool <laughs> we dumped in. It's my life. It's now or never. It's not your life, it's Jamie's life too. It's, well, it's everybody here's it's, life. It's our It's lives. Jamie's life, it's my life, it's Charles's life, Nathan's life, and it's also Jamie's dad's life. Hey. Okay, so we double checked our transmission fluid level to make sure that was good since we lost a bunch back at the shop. We got a misfire on cylinder one, but we have 87 octane fuel. We have almost no fuel in the tank. That's the first injector in line, so maybe there's just some crud in the injector. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go blow it out. We're gonna go to the gas station, get a bunch of fresh, clean, premium um, fuel in it, and... How are you feeling, man? Oh, I'm so tired. <laughs> it's been a long few days. I'm still worried that it's misfiring. Yeah. Real worried. So <laughs> that is how I feel. We can I, think I need a minute okay. of, of mental detox. I don't think we can drive this car for 10 hours with it to misfire that way. I don't think so either. We either have to get a trailer tonight. Like we can't wait till 9 a.m. to get a trailer. No. Because then we're not leaving until 10. It's we're going to be at home at and yeah. Hey, let's go back to the shop and output test this injector and see if it's clicking or not. Okay. We're, we're pretty sure that injector one is not clicking. <laughs> Can you make sure I turn left the ignition on? Hmm. We can tow it to the golf and sink it. We should have left this <laughs> shop nine hours ago. Which means we should be about home. We should be home. Yes, point. we should be nearing home. And we are in Florida and have a fuel injector that's bad again. Another overnight stay. The biggest problem with this is it's not even that we couldn't fix the injector because we were lucky when Charles went to the junkyard. We got, he got three injectors, so we were good. We had an extra. What this did, at least for me, and I'm sure probably for you too, is it gave me the doubt that it didn't even matter if we replaced it. Right. It wasn't over. Right. There was there had to be something <laughs> coming next. Because each milestone, it's like, okay, we fixed this problem. Cool, let's move on. We're good. Kick in the teeth. And then bam, and then bam, and then bam, again and again and again. It's like, how much can two boys handle <laughs> before before they quit? We've decided to name the car Murphy. Mm -hmm. After Murphy's Law. You want to tell the people at home what Murphy's Law is? Anything can go wrong, will go wrong. And I mean, the interesting thing about this is that it almost seems like we've made this, there's so many things that have gone wrong 
it seems like we've made this up for extra drama, <laughs> and I wish that was f***ing true. <laughs> I wish, I have a family vacation that I'm leaving Saturday morning for. It is currently Thursday night and I'm in Florida. Uh, so I have about 24 hours, a little bit over 24 hours to get home. Now we're going home a day late and many dollars short and many hours of sleep less and many inconvenience to Jamie and Jamie's dad. So, yeah. I'm not inconvenienced. Oh, they're inconvenienced. I'm just, I'm really He's just trying to be nice, that's all. Okay, so Jamie's going to explain testing the new or use injector that we have as an extra. Thank God, uh, Charles actually got an extra. Uh, two extra, as a matter of fact. So, uh, here's the testing. And what I did was use the power probe. By making this connection, it powers the solenoid, and I don't know if you'll be able to see any squirtage it's like it's sneezing, which means solenoid is working and it's taking the fuel and it's ejecting it out. That is my rigorous test and it is, I deem this a good injector. So, Dude, I'm nervous to even touch any of the damn rest of them now. I also am too nervous. But what do I, I, mean, I mean, you don't have any option. This guy is the one that's bad now. That's the guy that was bad last time. Hopefully the rest of these guys stay good. Stay good. Stay good, you. You stay good, you little you. We're gonna crank the engine, and it should flash. You're clear, Jamie. Yeah. There we go. So what that means is that the circuit to the injector is good. So we assumed that was the case, but double check always. Never assume you know what's wrong. All right, let's make sure we're out of gear. We're out of gear. Five, four, three, two, one. Oh, way better. Oh, thank God. That's so much better. Give it some rev. Missing. Oh, that's the noise we want. All right. <laughs> Let me take this thing for a ride. You watch this and like we finally get the car running, you look at our reactions, like really pathetic. I feel like we should be celebrating and jumping for joy. It's flat as a pancake. <laughs> but look, that is legit how we felt. At least I, you know, I can't speak for both of us, but that is how I felt. I was happy that it was running. I was happy that it was running well, but I was just so over it at that point in time. I just wanted to be home. I felt dead inside. Nice. We're not dealing with any more problems. Um, we can't. I don't think that Charles or I can mentally take it anymore. So here's we are. Here. It's fixed. It's hard to describe exactly how challenging this has been. We have worked, I would say about 18 hour days for four days straight now. Huge shout out to Jamie. Uh, he has put up with a lot of stuff. His guys <laughs> here has hel have helped us a ton. His dad has helped us a ton. Make sure you check out all of his stuff. He has a ton of content that he's gonna be putting out around this and future stuff, BMW stuff. Mostly BMW um, stuff, yeah. But yeah, make sure you check him out and hopefully we don't break down. The car does not sit in the stance that we actually would like it to sit, but we need to not rub a bunch and uh, it's a little bit rear squatty, uh, which isn't really the best look. But <laughs> now I know what you're thinking at home, you should lower it more. And we can't, or at least I don't want to ruin these brand new, these, the fender liners on this are almost 40 years old and they look immaculate. The last thing I'm going to do is destroy them. So um, we'll probably jack up the rear at some point or, and lower the front down a little bit to try to balance it out, but we cannot afford to mess around with all this time. I got us an air freshener <laughs> that we can hang um, gonna, from our rear view mirror gonna, this, for the ride home. This is going to live with us forever. Uh, Jamie's going to keep one so yeah. he can remember this terrible time. I'm making a <laughs> necklace. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to wear it. Run. So, we had a decent amount of sleep last night. We hung out with Jamie for wait, a wait, bit. Wait, 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 wait. This is running. It's running. Yes, it's running. Uh, so we're gonna get on the road and we'll see if we can make it without incident. We have uh, 600 miles. Six, 600, 600 miles to go. 
uh, we'll update you along the way. It feels awesome to be on the road and driving this thing, running smooth as glass. Well, there you go, running smooth as glass. All the air flow through the HVAC box from the highway has actually puked out a bunch of foam on the passenger side the floorboard. It used to be clean. It was once clean. Better onto the floorboard than into your lungs like that first time that we we turned it on. A 1984 fucking kit. Oh my god. That's true. I'll take that. <laughs> <laughs> I flipped the heat on, we are at 101. Well, I guess just keep keeping an eye on it and hopefully we uh, <laughs> we tighten the serpentine belt. I don't know, maybe air in the system still? Yeah, so uh, I just actually went up to 101, so uh, we're keeping an eye on it. If it gets closer, if we start creeping up again, then uh, maybe we'll look at it going off an exit soon. Yeah, that sounds good. Paul's nervous about the tires and the obvious rain. Hopefully the rain isn't crazy, uh, but I'm showing some traffic on the GPS. So the car's driving good so far. We're, you know, 120 miles in, give or take, and uh, no issues yet. But boy, it's, mm, we got a ways to go still. I think we're a little less than a quarter of the way home. How you doing on that temperature? 100. Yikes. Well, we got an exit in one mile. You think we should pull off and check the fans? I put the heat on. We are at 101. Also, I can barely see any out of the windshield because it's so foggy. Door There's term. a five minute slowdown caused by a crash at 600 feet. You are still on the fastest route. That thermal switch has two temperatures that it can do. I think it was like 90, 97 and 106. I mean, I put it on the 97 temp the lower of the two, whatever the numbers were actually. So the fans worked, the fans came on. The problem is that wiring was so crappy to the relay. And so it's not the fans, it's not the control, it's the power too. It's a, if it gets above, oh, uh, just hit 106. If it, if it hits 107, I'm pulling over. Okay, I would probably give it to 108, but yeah, that's that works for me. So we need to pull over. Uh, we're pulling over to a gas station here. We hit obviously a bunch of traffic. We're pulling over at this gas station to see if, one, to get fuel, two, to be sure our fans are actually working. So I'm gonna hop out, tap that relay with the yuck wiring, and see where we're at. The fans aren't working. The fans are not running. Nope. How many parts store runs is that? I don't know, <laughs> but it's a lot. That was also some a dope dope bars that I just laid down there. All right, so here's what we're doing. <laughs> Once I pull my head out of my We're butt. laying bars. We're laying bars and driving cars. So we're gonna run into advance. The problem we're having is the fans aren't kicking on. And the reason the fans aren't kicking on is the wiring to the relay and maybe even out of the relay are just complete trash. I mean, we're talking almost 40 year old wiring. They're coming apart and all, all full of oxidation and stuff. So we're gonna buy a relay. Been up kind of quick, we're at 95 now. <laughs> So we're gonna buy a relay kit, uh, some wiring, and which will probably all come in the kit, hopefully. No, we're, gonna, we're gonna buy this relay kit. We're gonna get some connectors. We're gonna get some crimpers, because I don't think I brought mine with, and we're gonna just throw it in the seat of the Scirocco, and if we need it, um, awesome, we have it. We can make this roadside repair super, super easy. Can you see if we have to make a U-turn to get in this place? So the reason why I was asking about if there was a U-turn is because between the rain, which causes visibility issues, and an old car that has no air conditioning, mm -hmm. I couldn't see shit. I couldn't see anything. I all I knew is I was turning, and then <laughs> that was all I knew. You just had to follow the uh, the red and yellow, <laughs> the red and yellow streaks that were through the fog <laughs> in my windows is all I could hope to follow. Which I was hoping for some assistance, but instead they just turned off the radio on me. <laughs> um, if we don't end up needing it, it'll be it'll be totally fine. Uh, I'll just return it in advance when I get home. I think we're gonna be okay, but I'd rather have a plan if we are, end up not being okay than uh, just continue riding with the angels, as they say. So yeah, that's what we're gonna do. Well, we've made it out of Florida. That is 
our first milestone. Let's uh, hope we can get to the other state. Okay, we are about halfway, give or take, to our way home. Paul, does this now drive better or worse than it did on the way down? Much better. Much better. Can you find the gears properly? Every single gear I can find and let out the clutch with vigor. Vigor and confidence when doing that dirt nasty clutch drop. I don't want to jinx us, but so far this car's done really, really well. Uh, especially considering, I think we put four miles on it before we actually left. So, yeah, I don't know. Um, Advisable to drive more than four miles before driving a car that you just tore completely to pieces. Multiple times. Multiple times. Multiple times. Be better than us and make better choices. By the way, we <laughs> intended to be home yesterday. Yeah. So we had a roughly, what you call a 36 hour cushion. Yeah, um, yeah. And we've eaten up a bunch of that cushion. Okay, something I forgot to mention, and I can't believe that we haven't done anything with this yet. When I went to the junkyard to get those injectors, there was a cassette tape in the Jetta that I got the injectors out of. So of course, being that our car has a tape player. Original I, tape I player. I had to take it, yeah, original tape player. I think it's a Clarion. We're gonna see if it works. Paul, do the honors. It works! How is it that a junkyard tape and a 40-year-old tape player work? My wife's Hispanic. Oh my god! Oh my god. <laughs> Even though my wife's Hispanic, that's that's uh, not music I'm interested in listening to. Yeah, but um, I think it needs to stay with the car as it, part of the journey. <laughs> and just like that, you can tell by the shaky cam what state we're in. South Carolina! We made it to South Carolina, so we got one more state to go through. One more state. How many miles are left? Um, I oh, love Jesus. South Carolina getting fuel because the, it's so cheap, but the roads are terrible. Which Our ride is actually fairly smooth, except for at certain speeds, because we didn't have hub center rings with our wheels that we last minute rushed cut. Uh, we get a pretty harsh vibration at certain speeds where we get some resonance, and it's, uh, it's pretty rough. What's the third one? What do you think? Did you say rattles or just vibrations? I didn't say rattles. Okay, so rattles and vibrations are definitely different. And if you know me, dash rattles and noises in the car drive me bonkers. So it's like hearing a dentist drill for the past three hours. But if we make it home okay, it'll be worth it. Okay, so we are 30 minutes out from Charlotte uh, or from our shop or warehouse and we have not had any problems yet. Do you think that'll continue? I feel pretty good. How do you feel? This is the most confident I have been all week. We made it! Looks like we made it. Hey! Almost! 1,100 miles or so in an 84 Scirocco. The only problem we had was when it was uh, after the engine swap, <laughs> was <laughs> when the fans wouldn't, didn't run uh, for a brief moment. Uh, are we leaking? It was us. Ooh, you're, you're dripping good. What are we leaking? Yeah, we got, oh, we got oh, a trans fluid maybe? No, it's oil. It's oil? Rear main. Oh, the, it's well, the it's, valve cover. Uh, we smelled oil actually just like 30 minutes, like 30 seconds ago, like right as we were about a quarter mile away and we think it's, it's from, coming from the valve cover. Because we plugged off the PCV, it blew out the gasket. So that's probably what happened. So we plugged it off originally and then we heard it hissing, if you recall. I do remember that. Um, so this was a self-induced leak. It's amazing. We've made it home. I don't know how. <laughs> no incidents whatsoever. Uh, not driving to or from. Not driving to or from. Didn't get Every... pulled over. Car didn't break down. <laughs> Every problem we had happened in a place where we could fix it, which is shocking. We did not lay on the road, not a single time to try to fix that car. We brought all kinds of tools and jacks and jack stands and didn't need any of them because I guess we were riding with the angels. <laughs> the angels were indeed yeah. riding with us as well. I, 
I don't know. I'm my mind is blown that we had every single one of those issues from start to finish and somehow figured out a way out of all those. Yeah. Uh, it's just a testament to stick to itness, which I don't think is a word, but who cares? Mm -hmm. I'm tired and don't, I don't I don't you're know. You're going home. Yeah, he's going home. <laughs> I'm he going has home another now. three hour drive. Bye. Three hour drive. Uh, <laughs> because he still had a three hour drive to get home and I had a family vacation, we got the f out of here and we like we were both completely exhausted yes. it was an all day on the road you know the previous four days were nothing but ball busting work and stress and that mm -hmm. so yeah i think we were pretty much both over it our balls that. were officially busted by that point busted uh we will have future content coming on this car uh we'll be at wookies with it he'll be at wookies uh, i'll be at wookies we'll be bringing the car we will have a detailing video we'll have a future pricing video to talk about the kind of the cost of what it costs to build a car like this yeah um <laughs> it's more than you might think it's it's pretty significant when you when you start doing some arithmetic yeah so uh also any comments you have i'm sure there are plenty leave them in the, the description you know or or put it where the comments go, the comments whatever, whatever, whatever you feel like doing. Uh, also, we'll, of course, link up all the stuff that we use mm -hmm. to do this thing um, in the description or in the comments, maybe both. Who knows? There's also our engine build video that we, you know, if, yes. you, if you want to see a little bit more in depth on what we truly did to that VR6 and why we're talking about how it's costing way more than you would expect. Even if you don't do dumb crap, like go to Florida like we did, um, there's a whole separate video for that where we went pretty deep in, in rebuilding that engine. We had a lot of problems before all the problems. <laughs> stacks on stacks on stacks. My question though, Paul, given what we know now, given how, how that whole thing went, would you do something similar like that again? I think we may have something similar like that again coming. Well, there you go. A big thank you to all the brands involved with this build. Most importantly, us, shopdap.com, Elite Motorworks. Dave over at TDC Shop was instrumental in getting us all the stuff we needed for this build. Eurowise for their engine swap parts, Solarworks, coilovers, Unitrack for the ECU tune, and BFI for the clutch parts.